Jew what is God's word. I responded to what his word says. And it's going to change and revolutionize and change your life. Uh, we was talking in numerous class and, and there's a point that I wanted to bring out that was just confirmation from Shalika. Shalika. Did I say it right? Yes. <laughs> Oh, two points. And talk about the three people. There, there's the, the unbeliever, and there's the carnal believer, and then there's the spiritual believer. And we want to talk about this because I want to help you to recognize that great is he that's within you that he is in the world. And the very thing that you depend on a lot, how many of you all work and go to your job, have a job, a career? Amen. Amen. How many of you all eat, eat this morning or yesterday? Amen. Amen. How many of you all are sitting in the seat right now? Amen. And you did not even prejudge the capacity of that seat. And this is where God want to move us to. He want to move us to a place from that you're not looking at it from a natural. Just like you're comfortably with, without reservation. You sat in that seat. You didn't. You know these chairs are made in Japan? Or China? Or wherever they was. They, they had to go through customs to get it. And you came in without a shadow. How you doing, Brother Lowley? You came in without a shadow of a doubt, and you sat here without questioning his capacity to hold it. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Yes. Amen. Amen. And where God want to move us to, God want to move us to a place where we see the same way about spiritual things and his word that we know that he got. And the challenge comes because you can't see him, but he wants to ele elevate our mind to the place where we know him. And, and, it's, and it's not caught up into emotional frenzy where I can swing off the lights and you say we had church, but it's, it's, it's manifesting itself that I know God is good. Amen. Jesus, yes. And yesterday I was, I was feeling, feeling pretty, feel, pretty bad in my, my physical body. And I was going in, in, in the purpose of my devotion. So I went into my prayer closet and I reached down and got the truth. All right. Thank you. All right. And I applied the truth and then I responded to the truth. And then I began to think of others that was going through physically. And then I began to intercede and pray for them. Uh -huh. And I know what I felt like throughout the course of the day, it, it dissipated. And so I know that there should be some results taking place with them because it's the same email that I sent for me, I sent for others. <laughs> so I know you have to have read the same email. Thank you. And it's, and it's, and it's not me, it's me responding to his word, sprinkling it with grace. And so be it. Yes. 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 God is good. Yes. So I, I want you to really walk with me, and I'm going to try to do this in the shortest time, and I can continue the parts of it next week because it's not to be taught in the same fashion. That I know that the mind capacity can only receive or understand about 20 minutes. <laughs> but I do know that there's three twenty minutes in an hour. <laughs> somebody say Heavy Holy Ghost. So if you don't get it in your first phase, somebody doesn't get it in the second, somebody get it in the third. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> So 
Someone say that the Holy Ghost. So, so the goal in it, I've been praying the Lord been asking me and sharing with me some things. So I'm going to walk with you through this, amen, process to help you to understand uh, the things that we're look, looking at, praise God. How do we transcend, and praise God. And, and, and it's the enemy tactic is to hinder your prayer life, hinder your studying God's word. How many of y'all been going through the Bible with me through the whole year? I'll be finished in November, getting ready to start again, to go back to some areas that I pointed out that I'm going to go back to, to get a deeper study in. How many of y'all? Amen. Amen. And, and go at a pace, go at a pace that you can live, that you won't condemn. This is not, these, these should not condemn you. You should be encouraged to say, okay, I'm going to pick it up. The first, we, we get to that part later. But the changing of your mind, the transforming cannot change Unless you allow the word to actually translate in your body. Because listen, we was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And even though we are born again, until we our minds renewed to recognize that we've been born again, we can still have actions of our past. Does that make sense? Yes. And, 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 and then you will get the same reactions from that action. Amen. Amen. So, in other words, if, if I slap my wife, she's going to slap me back. Woo! <laughs> so, listen, so, so, I know I'm not going to even go into that area. I'm going to that place. I'm not going to do it. Don't mess with it. <laughs> so so I, I want you to, to understand that a uh, reaction causes reaction. And when we react in the a, in a flesh, it's going to result to fleshly things. That's right. That's right. Uh, but when you respond to the spiritual things, praise God, and I want you to understand this, praise God, when you respond to spiritual things, it manifests itself in the spirit before you even see the manifestation that take place in the natural. So therefore, but we are impatient to wait on those things, yes. because we become instant real gratificational type of people. Praise God, but God is calling us, praise God, to walk in the spirit. Because so when we begin to walk in the spirit, we're not gonna mind the things in the natural sense. The natural things are not gonna disturb us. So where he's leading us to, a spiritual life, praise God, so therefore we're not caught up in the natural realm of things. Praise God, when God's gonna move, when he say he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it. The enemy can only challenge you in your natural self. And, and that's a place of comfort because you can relate to the natural things, praise God, because walking into the newness of life is areas that you have never went through. So we are familiar, we are always comfortable in familiar areas. That's why we have to walk into the Word of God so we renew our minds. <laughs> Did you know that the Lord said that you are more than a conqueror? Amen. Do you feel conquerorish? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Did you know that the Lord said that you are his sons and his daughters? Amen. Do you feel sonish or daughterish? Or do you recognize him as being your fatherish? I, I, I hear you know what I'm saying. Praise God. So the natural is enmity with God. In other words, the natural side of you, praise God, is going to always is going to challenge what the Word of God said. The natural side of you is enmity with God. In other words, the natural side of you can watch a, 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 a TV show for three hours, praise God, and, and can't get in the Word for three minutes. Am I right about it? That's true. So let's begin to recognize the tactics of the enemy. So what he's trying to do is trying to challenge us. He beat us up in those areas and then want you to feel condemned and guilty about it. Praise God. Then you feel that if God don't love you. Let me tell you that God love never changed. That's right. Let's start right there. His love for you never changed. Your choices bring consequences, but his love for you never changed. All right. 
I think once you can get past of that, because you may be related to your own natural father, praise God, but God as your heavenly father, love for you ain't going to change. Let's get towards past the first 20 minute segment. So let's let's go to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Amen. We're gonna, we're gonna go there and pull up some nuggets. And then we're gonna have to go to Galatians. Uh, uh, Galatians. Okay, you're going to be reading Galatians 5, and, and I, I, I'd say I think only 5 and 7. How you doing, Brother Jeremiah? One thing about a church like this, you can always know people's names, unless you forget it. <laughs> So, read the real thing. So, we're going to go ahead and read. Ephesians 4, 11 and 16. Uh -huh. We're going to read that in its entirety. Amen. Amen. So, this is not going to count as my 20 minutes because I'm not going to speak. <laughs> Amen. Am I right? Am I right, Ariana? Go ahead. And some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Amen. For, and, the, uh -huh. for the perfecting of the saints. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Okay, pause right there. I, I want to just throw this nugget out. Why did he give them? Oh, okay, so my, my topic, so I'm going to have to come back. The topic is maturing the saints. But I try to break it all the way down and bring it to a language where you can comprehend even more, what the saints need to know. How's that? What the saints need to know. All right? Is that all right? All right, so he, he gives us uh, pastors, he gives us uh, spiritual leaders, he gives us uh, <coughs> spiritual advisors, if you will, that, that he has Require with requirements, it doesn't make us any more special than you, whatever, but that's just the gift. And, and then he mandate those leaders to ensure in, in the book of Timothy and others to, 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 to follow some particular guidelines. Oh, are you following what I'm saying? So it ain't just, uh, you know how we used to play tag, you it, 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 ain't, it ain't that kind of thing. Okay? So there's there's a responsibility and there's there's uh, there's uh, mandates and there's uh, areas where he said that if you are uh, going to be a teacher of the word then you got to live by the word or your consequences are even greater and there's areas in Ezekiel where he said that you're responsible to tell it even if you don't think it's going to offend them when you are responsible or it's going to be on or the blood will be on your hand in other words it'll be like as though if you had uh, you do have participated. In the same act, so so there's. I'm just trying to trying to qualify. Praise God. The, the when he's talking about the uh, the apostles and the prophets and the pastors and the teachers, they just can't just put a tag on and say you it. Praise God. A true man of God, a true woman of God. Praise God is going to be the be the, the, the area of their qualification. Amen. So then he said, I'm going to give you this, and, and just to paint a picture and just give you a little bit of history. Jesus had ascended to heaven, praise God, and he told them, praise God, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to come. I'm going to send my spirit down, praise God, and, and I'm going to empower you to continue the effort and continue the work, praise God. He even as goes as far, he said, the greater works will you do. And the greater works is not that you will be able to walk uh, farther on the water than he did, that you will, in other words, the magnitude of the greatness of, praise God, that the word of God will be able to go farther than yes, Jerusalem. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm sharing this morning, praise God, and this is now 2016, 
And that was back over, back over a little bit over 2,000 years ago. And the gospel message is still powerful and potent even right now today. That's right. That's how powerful yes, it, it is. And, and praise God, the word of God said, upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell. In other words, whatever the action of, of Satan do to try to prevent it, it will not stop the gospel message. And we are living proof because salvation, how many of you are saved, sanctified, filled in this Holy Ghost? Praise God. And you are walking evidence, praise God, of what he had already spoke. And if you know that he already spoke that before you was even in existence, Praise God, that should give you indication now that you are in existence that he's still real in your life. And he is still doing works. The book of Acts never closed its doors and completed it in conclusion. Praise God, you are supposed to continue with the same effort with the same Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. The dead should still rise up. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blind eyes are still open. Hallelujah, blessed be the name of not because of you, because it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise yes. God, it resurrected way back then, yes. even up to now, with the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, yes. working and operating in purpose. Yes. Praise God, the reality part, you got to come out of the natural and walk in the Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Somebody raise your hand and say, 20 minutes have passed. So now as we enter into the next 20 minutes, are you still with me? Let us read on. For the work of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. Perfecting the saints. In other words, maturing the saints. Developing the saints. Hmm. Underline this in your Bible. I want you to meditate this on when we go into our week of prayer fasting. Read on. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Uh huh. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Is everybody here, anybody here that ain't been edified? Alright. I see the silence happened. Okay. Alright. For the edifying of the body. So in other words, the power is here from leadership and to saintship to impact your life. Did you catch that? From the anointing power of the Holy Spirit moving among your leadership unto the hearts of the saints. Praise God that the gift of the saints is being moved. Praise God that the Body is being edified. Did you enjoy the worship this morning? Amen. 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 You know. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, mm -hmm. that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slave of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking <coughs> of him in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Make it make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. And jump jump down to twenty three and twenty four. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, mm -hmm. and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hallelujah! Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Don't don't know. We're gonna we gonna talk about this. Praise God. But I want to go to Galatians in a little bit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just read it for us. Read Galatians. Uh, 5 and 7. Read that for us. Galatians 5 and 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Wow. Wow. So you, 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 you run well. You remember when you first got saved, you wanted to save the whole world? You want to get some Holy Ghost dust? Get a helicopter and just sprinkle all over the place and change the whole world? <laughs> you remember that? You ran well, but who hindered you? <laughs> who hindered you? Who, who got in the way? Who got in your spirit? Who, who got in your ear All right. to hinder the transformation well, of you going in from the natural 
going to the spiritual realm. Who beheads you? All right. I told you that the enemy, you remember when you first got saved, you couldn't get enough of Bibles. You wanted to study Bible, you wanted the Greek Bible, you wanted the translation, you wanted the message. You wanted the other version, you wanted that version. You wanted the ear version of the E Bible, the U Bible, and the B Bible. Parents God, you wanted Bible study, and then you call a prayer time and say, Is there service on Monday night? Parents God, and on from Monday you said, Is there anything happening on Friday night? Is there anything happening at noon day service? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Parents God, I pray that there's not an even service today. You ran well.
You just start blaming everybody. Except for recognizing it was the enemy use a trick from your past to trick you up. So, therefore, you got to recognize that it ain't nobody but you and the enemy, and you fell prey to that. Dust it off, shake it off, repent, and do your first works all over again, and praise God, get back on track on the place where God is taking you. That's the power of grace. Grace covered us when we had that passion for God, even in our falls. So I thought I should just have you with that because a lot of times we get beat up at that place when it's already been done at the cross. So I wanted you to help you to see that what hindered you, what held you back, what slowed you from getting to your word as you are. Because the transformation is going to require your commitment to God first. And your love for him. And then you're going to start begin seeing the transformation begin to take place in your life. You're going to be able to walk up in the morning with authority. You're going to be able to go to bed with authority. You're going to be able to recognize battles versus trials in your life. Okay? Praise God. So let's, let's read on uh, in, in correcting. I mean, let's go to Galatians. And move down just a little bit. With the fifth chapter. Let's talk about the 26th, 22nd chapter. Uh, the 22nd verse. Before, before, I, before I get there, I want to back up. I think I want to. Let's go to 16. Let's go to 16. Can you go to 16? Five sixteen. Galatians 5, 16, and 17, and 18. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. 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 Did you see that? Praise God. So listen, what he's saying here, and what the word of God is describing, that this is what I say. He said, walk in the spirit. Now let me just help you to understand. Walking in the spirit is not walking down the street speaking in tongues. <coughs> walking in the spirit is just walking in, in the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, and John tells us, praise God, when the spirit of truth comes, it's going to lead us and guide us. Praise God. And through God's word, praise God, if you study God's word, praise God, I know somebody said, order my steps by thy word. Amen. Praise God. And his word will order my steps. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. So we begin to, to understand that, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. Proverbs 13 and 20 said, he that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. So in other words, you need to change your company. You see what I'm saying? You, you need to get you need to get a fellowship with like-minded people that's walking in the same direction where you go. Do, do it make sense? Amen. Praise God. You need small partners. Amen. Praise God. You need praise God people that's going to encourage you. You need people, praise God, that if you fall, they're going to lift you up and vice versa, and they're not going to condemn you. Praise God. If they recognize that we're all in the same battle together, praise God, to reflect his glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, Praise God. And understand that what is, what is he saying, praise God? He said, this I say, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Praise God. So in other words, if you walk in obedience to God's word, yeah. you're not going to fall prey to the enemy tactics. <laughs> this is how, praise God, you don't get trapped by the enemy's setups. Yeah. Amen. But hey, hey, let me help you understand. If you don't get into God's word and, just, and write it on the table of your heart, praise God, guess what? You're going to fall prey to the enemy because you won't have nothing Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, you're not going to go to a score fight with a little fingernail file. So he, he, he pull his sword out and say, unguard, and you're going to pull out a little fingernail thing. Are, are you hear what I'm saying? 
Praise God. So therefore, you need the word of God. And what is the word of God? The word of God is our sword. Amen. Praise God. It's a sword. Praise God. And we pull this sword out. Praise God. And God's word. Praise God. Listen. Praise God. I'm telling you, it's powerful. Praise God. By itself. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. In Hebrews 4 and 12, say, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joint of the marrows, and is discerned of the thought and intent of the heart. Yeah. Then I praise God. The word of God will reveal the things that's in your heart. What's your motive why you're doing what you're doing? Praise God. The word of God will discern it. As you read the word of God, it will discern your own thoughts. Praise God. So when your thoughts, praise God, become, praise God, how to praise God, opposite from what God's thoughts are, praise God, you will cast down those imaginations. Yeah. I, I won several battles today by applying the word of God on it. I mean, this week. Amen. Praise God. So when the thoughts come in your mind, praise God, it's not your, praise God, it's, 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 it's not against you to have a thought come through your mind, but what do you do with the thought that comes through your mind? Praise God, you cast that imagination down by the word of God and you replace it with a thought of God's word. But if you have not the word, then you have nothing to use against the, the tact of the enemy. So if I was the enemy, I'm going to do everything to distract you from getting to God's word. Praise God. So then if I can distract you from getting to God's word, I'm going to set you up. I'm going to set you to a place where you're going to have a good time in church. Wow. Wow. Bitch, you're going to swing off the lights. Wow. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'll erase that. Wow. And, and, and you're going to say, we had a good time. And leave out of here. Praise God. I want you to help you understand. Praise God. And what you have gained, you gained an emotional aspect of your part of your life. But there was no spiritual growth. Your sword wasn't sharpened. It wasn't there to sharpen that word in you, praise God. Praise God, you left here the same way that you left out. It didn't bring forth a conviction. It didn't bring forth a change. It didn't bring forth a thought in your mind to move you from the place where you were. Jesus. So the enemy will make you look at natural success as a part of your spiritual prosperity. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He, he will make, and then you feel great that you haven't conquered some things in the natural, but you're not going spiritual. You're still hating people. Amen. Still looking at people cross-eyed. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I wish for you all things that you prosper, <coughs> be in health, <coughs> even as your soul. So then he will get you to that place, and you will think you're here. And praise God, in reality, you haven't grown there. Praise God, what happened, and the enemy will come and say, okay, now, I got into this place. And then he'll begin to attack. And there's no word to substantiate you for the battle. Then you go into depression, oppression, demission, and submission. <laughs> Oh, oh. Alright. Crossing over to the twenty minutes and we'll close his eye. <laughs> so let's let's listen. Seventeen verse. So the, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. As long as you are on this natural body and you have came out of the enemy's territory and you've been born again, guess what? The battle will intensify even more. Amen. The Jewish drinker, the enemy will give you free drinks. If you was a player, 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 the ones that you was trying to play become available to play. I'm talking about both parts, male and female. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say, because the enemy, so you're looking at it from a natural perspective, but in reality, he's, he, is, he is throwing darts at you, and you don't recognize them as darts. 
because you have no word to confirm these things in your spirit, to discern. Don't you know your discernment is more keen when you're in the word of God? So if I was the enemy, if I could stop you from getting in that word, I'm going to hinder your discernment. Praise God. And that that you was running well with, praise God, I'm going to hinder you because now, therefore, your passion for his word is starting to diminish. And not that it's diminishing, other things begin to come in place. And when these other things begin to come in place, and you're always saying that I'm going to get there, I'm going to do that. And one day I'm going to do this, then how long are you now? And, and, and one day I'm going to do this, and one day I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. I was sharing that over the day. Praise God, you say, I, I'm gonna, one day I'm going to give a whole lot of money to the church. If, you don't trust, if you're not faithful with that dollar, If you're not faithful with the dollar that he gave you, he sure ain't going to trust you with the million. Yes. God has a big thing on being faithful with a few things. He always tried your heart. He tried Abraham's heart. The mere thing that he told Abraham, I'm going to use to bless you and your seed, they told him to sacrifice the seed. And some of you all can't transcend to the next place because you can't trust God with the ways they you to sacrifice. That's another topic. Amen. Let me give me a minute to the second syndrome. Give me come out. Give me come out. Somebody say, give me come out. I want you to really understand that there's a war going on in you. Each and every one that's in this church right now, there is a spiritual battle that goes on. When you, when you accept the, the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and make a decision to, to follow him, the war began right there. The war began right there, and the enemy began to use tactics that he already is familiar with in reference to you because he knew you had came from the hood. So if you know who you have came from there, he's going to use the same tactics. Praise God. So what the word of God said, hey, follow me. Peter, follow me. Look at me, Peter. Don't look at the world. Don't look at it. As long as you keep on looking at me, you're going to be all right. But I'm going to always be there. Even if you fall, Peter, don't, I'm going to be right there to pull you up. You didn't catch that one, did you? Because I have a purpose in you. I have a purpose in you. And I, I love this part, praise God, when... When Jesus ascended, he told, told them, he said, he told uh, the woman, he said, go and tell the disciples and put emphasis on Peter, too. Because yeah. Peter, you know he was going through after he done denied Jesus, after Jesus told him what he was going to do. And for three times, and praise God, and Peter was like, boisterous and said, no, not me, not me. And as soon as he got out of the church, as soon as he got out of the presence of, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. As soon as he got out of the presence of Jesus and got by himself, the real you shows up when you're by yourself. That's when the real you shows up when you're by yourself. That's when you need the anointing. That's when you need the organ. <laughs> the real you shows up when you're by yourself. And understand it, praise God, when Peter got out of the presence of Jesus, praise God, and everything that Jesus said, he did it three times. <laughs> And you know how he felt. And some of you were feeling the same way. I tried something, got excited, praise God, and slipped up, messed up. Praise God, right back to the same mess, praise God. But here's the thing, praise God, Jesus told that he ascended, praise God. He already know, here I said, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Praise God, he already spoke on the word that was already in Peter. Praise God, I was going to build upon you, Peter. Praise God, I'm not looking for where you are. I'm looking at where you're going. I'm looking for the potential that is in you, Peter. Praise God, he said, praise God to the, to the women. He said, go and tell my disciples mm, and put emphasis on Peter, too. Because he said, I know Peter right now is depressed. I know Peter right now is oppressed. I know Peter is beating up himself. I know Peter is feeling guilty. I know Peter is feeling all these kind of things, praise God. But he said, put emphasis on getting Peter, too. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was, that's showing God's love. His love, yes. praise God, is deeper than your mess. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear what I said. Amen. His love for you is deeper than your mess. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. What he see, praise God, he see what he put in you. Praise God. You know what I'm saying? He's not looking at where you are. Praise God. But as soon as you come out, praise God, he's able to open arms, receive you to the place where he'll call you. Blessed be the name and ring the bells and let's celebrate. Praise God, because they have came out of the flesh and now they're walking in the spirit. Praise God, celebrate. Praise God, now they can walk in the newness of life. Now they can walk in the authority of the word of God. So there's a war going on with the spirit in you and your flesh. It's enmity. The flesh is enmity. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Praise God. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. So that they cannot do the things that you would. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The challenges that's going on. In the truth be told. And we tell the real testimonies of our lives. A lot of people really will be delivered. Praise God, when they recognize it. Oh, you went through that? Yeah, I went through that, but God delivered me. Praise God, the lust of my flesh did not conquer that day. Yeah. Praise God, I won. Praise God, through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who has strengthened me. Praise God, listen, let me help you up as I get ready to close this out. Praise God, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. You win by every moment. Don't wait till you get to the end of the day. Win every moment. Yes. Win every thought. Because the next thought will lead to the next thought. And it's a trap set. Praise God. But usually you're deserving with the word of God. And now the word of God is enriching you to reveal these traps of the enemy. Yes. <coughs> Let me close with this. With my helper over here. Galatians. Go to Galatians 5 and 22. This is where God wants us to grow. This is where he wants us to mature in. This is where he wants us to grow. He wants us to grow. He wants to mature in these areas. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Read, read that for us. Galatians 5.22 uh -huh. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Amen. So for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. And we read the twenty third it says meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. In other words, there's no limit. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's no law to gauge it in the sense, praise God, to love. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What I love today. Well, tomorrow you need to love again. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Long suffering is patient. And the thing about patience, I want you to look at this is all in the fruit of the Spirit that He wants to be able to apply in our lives to mature in this particular area of our life. Praise God. The fruit of the Spirit is long suffering. That's patience. Patient to be able to wait. Praise God on God. When a manifestation that manifests in the spirit realm is going to manifest itself in the natural realm, you got to be patient and wait for the manifestation to take place. Yes. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. When you pray and you get that yes in your spirit, man, then you can move on. Then your praise change. The prayer change. The prayer change from, Lord, please give me direction. Then when you get that yes in your spirit, then your prayer changes to, Lord, I thank you. Even though you don't see the manifestation taking place in the natural. But now, Lord, I thank you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And when you know you get a yes in your spirit, it's a word that he gives you. It's a word. He, he gives you a word. He speaks a word into your spirit, man. Praise God. And, and, and when he gives you that word in your spirit, man, it's written down. Now it's written in the table of your heart. You see what I'm saying? Praise God. So when the enemy comes in, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, to tell you something to deviate from that, that heaven of salvation, praise God, is what you need, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, praise God, and praise God, when doubt, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, when Paul, praise God, when doubt trying to come in against the plan what God have already said, the heaven of salvation will shield it off. It, it, it can't penetrate down to the spirit, man, praise God, it, it causes you to derail and go into a different direction. Because now you're walking in the spirit, praise God. The first thing you have to understand, walking in the spirit, like I alluded to earlier, walking in the spirit is not walking down the street speaking in tongues. Praise God. How to walk in the spirit is speaking in what God have already said and what he have already declared. And you will operate in the obedience of what his word said. Amen. 
Father. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise and I think that will help a lot of people, praise God, because a lot of people think that if you don't shout, you ain't got it. A lot of people feel that if you don't jump up and down, you ain't got it. I beg a different. I'm a rocker. They took my chair away. Oh, <laughs> While you running down the wall, I'm rocking. <laughs> oh, yes. Hallelujah. But you can't hear me. Amen. That's the only go. Shade on you. Amen. You can't hear me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. You get up there and you want to step on the roaches, that's fine. Praise God, but I'm a rocker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Some people might just wave their hand. Some people with eyes brought by just like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen, let me say my clothes and praise God. One of the things that the enemy, enemy always does is the spirit of assumption. It's one of the greatest spirits that take place in humanity amongst people. It's that we begin to assume the words. But if we begin to see people as Christ sees people and see that Christ, that we are sons of God. If I'm a son of God, and if you're a son of God, then that makes them let's start looking at the sonship in us. That's right. Amen. Wow. That's right. And, and we are all <coughs> going to perfect it of the who? The uh -huh. the saints come marching in. All right. Amen. Praise God. Did we hit that one right? Amen. Praise God. So look at somebody. You see that sign on my back? Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Minute work is under construction. Angels are working on me. Trial is working on me. Praise God. Please be patient. Oh, you didn't see that sign? <laughs> we were working on the construction. In Philippians 1, 5, and 6 tells us, thank you so much. Thank you, you a beautiful job. Yeah. Blessed be the name of God. Listen to what he tells us. So you want to get Philippians 5, 1, 1, 5, 6, 4, since you've done such a good job. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. She take out the mic, look at the class, look at that. It's a great <laughs> Philippians 1, 5, and 6. Uh -huh. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. What, 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 what? From your fellowship in what? The day that you crossed that line. I wish I had another 20 minutes. <laughs> we need to do a vote here. <laughs> listen, listen. Listen, 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 listen. This, this is one thing that you want, you can trust. You can trust in Hebrews 12 and 6, 1 through 14. I'm not going to read that. Uh, but read that for us, what you were, where you at, Philippians. And you get Hebrews. And I'm going to close this out. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you some change. I'm not going to take the whole 20 minutes. You can take some change, some leftover minutes, and use it for something else. Is that right, Trina? Yep. <coughs> Being confident of his name that he which hath begun a good work in you. First of all, I want you to do this. Put your chest up. Feel confident that your Lord and Savior is going to work it out. Your son, he's your father, he's going to work it out. I had some unscripted go talk about the father, but we ran out of time. So listen, I want you to catch this. I'm going to tell you how powerful this is. You got to read Hebrews. You got to read Hebrews to speed read the course. And Hebrews 12, 6, 14 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastened, and scored every son whom he receives. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. But what son is he whom the Father chastened not? Recognize that chastening is God's discipline in, in your life to perfect you, to come into the purpose of who you are. 
Trials come to make you strong. That trial is a tool that God used to chase in you to perfect you, to get your attention to the place where you're supposed to be. Amen. Some of you all, your prayer life, some of you all have been called even the intercessors, and you're not there yet because you ain't got enough for trials. <laughs> you ain't there because you need some trials, you need some chasing. In other words, you need to be in time out. <laughs> Trials come to make us strong. Trials purify our intention. Joseph was called to be a leader to bring the people from Osha, or where was that? Goshen. And, and to bring them to a place in Egypt because it was all part of the prophecy to bring them so they could go back. And the orchestration of working out for the good of time. And Joseph was arrogant. He had an arrogant tone. He was proud. But God had a purpose in him. So he had to take him all the way down to the prison life. And during that time, he was able to recognize the anointing in his life. Because wherever he was, he was always a leader. Did you catch that? Amen. So that's, that's enough right there. <laughs> Amen. So, if you endure chasing, God's dealing with you as a son. In other words, as a father, you always want the best for your children. And therefore, sometimes, if taking the trash don't come automatic, if you know what I'm saying? And I ain't putting shade on anybody. But if taking out the trash don't come automatic, and then, uh, what's those things you give? Allowances don't come automatically either. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's true. But you still get a roof over your head, you still get uh, three course meals a day. That's right. But you ain't getting nothing else. Because <laughs> I, I want you to love what you do. And do it because you part of the whole family. This is your responsibility, what you bring to the table. But I want to grow that the, the responsibility part. You need to learn how to cook. The mama ain't going with you. She's staying with me. And you go to college. <laughs> I'm just telling you something. I want you to work because when you go to college, I'm not going to call you. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So there's things that you want to be to make sure that become part of their development. And God is saying that these are the things in order for, for the glory, my glory, to be perfected out of you. I want this to be, I want you to be willing and obedient. Right now you're obedient, but you're not really willing. I want you to have a willing heart to do it. The thing that Job feared the most, it was a trial to develop him to know God in a special way that he never knew. Amen. I'm close with that. Read Hebrews 12, 6 to 14. And I'll probably... If I'm inclined, I'll probably do some more teaching on the chasing because we need to understand that sometimes we don't recognize where we are in our lives. You just think it's just a trial and I'm going through, the devil's on my back. Blah, blah, blah. You got to recognize if the devil is really on your back or if this is an action from your reaction. Amen. God got a marvelous thing to do in your life. That your spiritual father. It's my responsibility to help equip you to recognize those areas in your life and partner with you to fulfill that purpose in your life. Amen. Let's all rest on our feet. Amen. How much time we got left? Let's see here. Amen. So Bishop, you did 40 minutes.
Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's good. He's simply worthy to be praised. <coughs>